realize who he is, but we sell him short. We try to find other avenues and other ways to do great or to uh, figure out things for our lives, uh, but he is. He said, I am that I am. You fill in the blank for whatever you want. We have to realize who God is, rely on who he is, and don't forget what he's done in our past, regardless of what we may be facing right now. Unexpected things happen every day. The way the world is going, we don't know left from right sometimes, right? But God is still on the throne, and he was, he is, and he shall be. He cannot change, he cannot lie. So whatever you ask and whatever you need, as long as it is in accordance with his will, fighting the wrong war. We're not supposed to be fighting people. We wouldn't be going through what we're going through a lot of the times if we fought in the spirit realm. Just say, okay, you know what? I don't know what's going on with my boss today, but I'm going to just pray a prayer and be done. You don't have to argue. The tit for tat is it's, it's not necessary because we already know who owns the cattle on Thousand Hill. Regardless of what the Fortune 500 company is, he already owns it. They think they own it. But he already owns it, right? Okay, so we just have to rely on and know who God is. So this song says, God, my Savior, God, my healer. Yeah. 
to praise with your lips, not just with your hands. Say, God, we love you. We adore you. We honor you. We bless your name because you're so awesome. You're so mighty. You're so great. Hallelujah, God. We love you. In spite of ourselves, you counted in that robbery to let us see another day. This new day in January 2018, a year of infinite blessings, a year of infinite grace, infinite mercy, oh God, we praise you. We give you all that we have. All that we are is already yours, oh God, hallelujah. There is none like you in all the earth, none like you in all the earth, oh God, hallelujah. So we bless you, God. We bless you, because you are so great. Oh, God, hallelujah. Can we just open up our mouths and worship? Hallelujah. Just open up your mouth. Speak. Speak. God is a speaking spirit. We are made in his image. Speak out to him. Call out to him. God, we love you. We adore you, God. We counted it not robbery that we're here today. Hallelujah. So we bless you. We say hallelujah. The highest praise is hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Oh.
sing that with us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold. Death could not hold you down. Oh, you are the risen King. Come on, open your mouth with praise. It's not a spectatorship seated in majesty. Oh, Lord, you are the risen King. Everybody say hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won, and won the victory, oh, we say hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me, bless you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us our life, health, and strength. We thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to not be consumed by whatever it is that we are facing. Whatever the devil has sent to attack us, God. We are able to overcome. We are walking as overcomers. Because we were created in your image, you own a cattle on a thousand hills as your children, oh God. We are heirs to that cattle on a thousand hills. So God, we call on you right now as our savior, our healer, our deliverer, our protector, our sustainer. And God, we love you. God, we give you all that we have because we know that you can handle it all. Whether it's cancer, diabetes, whether we just want to lose a little weight so that we can be healthier. Because we can't be healthy, we have to be healthy in order to witness. In order to, to bring people into the fold, we have to be healthy so that we can fulfill our purpose on this earth. Because each one of us has a purpose. You've given us the gifts and the tools we need to be great, to be amazing, to be so awesome. Hallelujah. So God, as we cast our cares, we just worship you. 
We know how to praise through our trials so that we make it through. So we lift up a praise. We give you our worship, our sincere worship. Because it is what you are doing. You move when we praise. You move when we worship. Not just when we cry out only in need, but even in our times of bliss. God, we worship and we praise you. Because we realize it is in, it is in you that we are. We have our being. So God, we say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for our limbs. Thank you for our eyes to see. Thank you that we were able to come in here whether we willed or want. Use the cane or use our two feet. God, we thank you. And we count it not robbery that we are here. Life is so precious. People are dying every single day. Some even die alone. But God, we thank you for not leaving us alone. Even when we are by ourselves, we are not by ourselves. So God, we thank you. And we love you. And we honor you with our presence here today as we assemble together. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, give God some glory. Anybody just glad to be here? One more time. Anybody just got some energy and some, some excitement about what God has done for you this week? Uh, that you came through some stuff that you maybe realized that you wasn't going to make it, but thank God you made it. Any folk that just glad that you made it, I'm, I'm walking on stuff that I just thank God that I made it because it did not have to be this way. It could have been the other way as the old folk used to say, but I thank God that we are walking by our faith and not by our sight. And we are standing on his promises and his promise declared that he shall never leave us nor will he forsake us. So anybody know that he has never forsaken you? Come on, that's just somebody who knows what you've gone through, not because I'm asking you, but because you know it for yourself. It's something that you can testify, not because of your neighbor, but because of what he has done. And you look good. Matter of fact, you look beautiful. I like to see smiles. I like to see tears. I like to see your hands folded, your, your eyes lifted up and your hands raised up because it let me know that you have a connection to the one who you need to have a connection to. It ain't because of me, but it's because of him. And I thank God for each one of your presence in this atmosphere. You bring joy to the house. Tell somebody you bring joy to the house. You, you, you bring joy to the house, and you honor God in his presence. I like that song you were singing. You are wonderful victory. Just let that minister, come on, let that minister to you for a minute. Hallelujah. What a beauty. That's the highest praise you can give him. Just let that do something to your own spirit. Isn't that a testament that it wouldn't hold him down?
every victory he's won for you. Every softly. God, our Father, thank you for the prayers that have already gone up into your atmosphere. We thank you for this, the sweetness of the spirit that lingers in your atmosphere. We thank you for the softness of your presence and the gentleness of your breeze that flows throughout the heart of those who are here. You do what you know to do. You move as only you can. You don't need permission to move, so you do it according to your will. And allow those who are sitting and standing in this atmosphere to feel your presence. And find themselves a little closer to you just by having been in this atmosphere. Do it in the name of Jesus. We intercede on somebody's behalf that could not be here. Meet them wherever they are. Hold them in the hollow part of thy hand. You do it, Christ, as only you can. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, and accept our petition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn. to hear that one today.
back in noise. Yes, Christ. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's everything. Everything to me. Yes, Christ. How many of you know he rules the land? I know Christ is all. Without him, nothing. Come on, sing it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's a good old hymn. Somebody know that he's all. This ain't no, this ain't just for anybody. Oh, come on. He brought you through some stuff. He's everything to me. Yes, Christ. Think about where you came from. Every land and the sea. Christ, oh, then all. Oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. He's everything. Christ is all. He rules the land and the sea. Oh, come on, that's for the believers. I'm looking at some folk that came through. Come on, come on. Oh, then all. One more time for the spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it for me. His Christ is all. He, he's everything to me. Thank the Lord he rules. The land and the sea Without Nothing could be oh, Come on This world oh, Come on put your hands together Amen Got us over. When our ancestors were digging ditches down in Dixie, that they sang these hymns, amen, and that gave them the strength to keep on going. I apologize to Mary Mary, but we ain't singing no shackles up in heaven. Apologize to Kurt Franklin, we ain't singing no stomp up in heaven, amen. 
How we got over. Amen. An amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. If you got sight this morning, give God praise. Amen. Let us look now what's going on in the life history of our church. So much is going on. And we thank God for your presence here today. You can follow us on Twitter at underscore BME Pastor. There are activities going on this week and this month here at the Brooklyn Church to remind you that our new office hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Again, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Bible study will be this Wednesday beginning at 645. We're looking at the book of Proverbs. Again, we because of the weather, we didn't do it last week, so get your information off of the app. Um, our nursery minister is requesting donations of baby products. You can bring them to the church, and they will be donated to sister care. Also, we need membership updates. If you have moved, change your telephone number, or if we don't have your picture on our database, please stop by the office. Baptism, baptism is next Sunday. Baptism is next Sunday at 5.45 p.m. on the West Campus. If you need to be baptized, bring you the right hand to fellowship. The Young Ministers Conference for Pastor Jackson is on February the 5th through the 8th. It's not just for ministers and pastors. It's for the entire church. Some of the greatest preachers are coming. Our prophetess, Renee Glenn, will be with us March 10th and March 11th. And March 10th is a Saturday beginning at 9 a.m. for a women's fellowship. Amen? Please put that on your calendar March 10th. Don't forget to download our church app in your app store. And our ministry focus this morning will be on Congregational Care Youth and the Usher's Ministry. Amen and amen. Let's give our ministries a round of praise and applause and thank them for their service. We also want to recognize Miss Jean Gatewood, who has given us flowers for the altar in loving memory of her husband, the late George Henry Gatewood, who passed one year ago on January the 21st. We do love him, love her, remember his legacy of love. Amen. 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 We certainly want to recognize our visitors right now. If you are visiting with our church, then like to stand. If you want some information about our church, if you're new to this area, our ushers have a little information packet. But we certainly want to acknowledge your presence and thank God for you being here. So if you can, if you would.
would like to, please stand and raise your hand, and we want to. God bless you for standing up, my sister. God bless you. Miss Manaya, good to see you here. God bless you. Keep standing. Keep standing one minute. Keep standing one moment. Stand on up. Our church wants to thank you for being here this Sunday morning. Brooklyn, let's stand, and we want to welcome all of our visitors now to the Brooklyn Baptist Church. Welcome to Brooklyn. It's fellowship time in the house of the Lord.
Oh, come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise up in here. I know some of y'all wait to give cheers and praise for a two football games later on this afternoon. I don't know why you're saving your tears. Why don't you give God a cheer right now? Why don't, why don't you praise God who woke you up this morning, who, who started you on your way, that, that put food on your table. If anybody can't, 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 can't stop praising them, anybody can't, can't, can't stop praising them, anybody can't, 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 can't stop praising them. Be it well. That was good right there, ain't it? That was good right there, James. That y'all took us back. Sit on down, sit on down. God is free. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. And that's 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 my type of gospel. I don't know about you, but that's that's from the 90s. That's when fires were right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Matthew chapter 28. Let's go back, if you don't mind, to Matthew um, chapter 28, um, verses 16 through 20. Praise God for our sound team and our anointed musicians. And thank God for our media ministry and our anointed musicians. Amen. Amen. And their road manager, Boutte. Amen. Amen. See, if you were listening, you would know what I said, but you're talking all the time. Matthew 28. Verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Somebody say worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. On your mark, get set, go. On your mark, get set, go. On your mark. Get set, go. We certainly pray that you will pray with us through this preaching experience. Matthew chapter 27 is the chapter in Matthew upon which Jesus is arrested, tried, found innocent, then found guilty, sentenced to death, crucified. And died. All that happens in chapter 26 of the gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 28, however, begins with Mary and her cousin, who's also named Mary, who wake up early that first Easter morning and find their way to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with oil and spices because of the swiftness of what happened on Friday evening. Right. He was not giving a proper Jewish burial. Right. But you know the story. When they get to that tomb, right. they found that the stone had been rolled away and there was an empty tomb with a piece of linen laying on the ground. 
like anyone who finds an empty grave in a cemetery, they become fearful. And an angel stops them on their way and tells them to do not be scared. For he who you have been looking for has risen just. Somebody say just. Just as he said. And depending on what gospel you read, they either start running or are told to run by the angels to go get his disciples. And a message is given to his disciples to go meet him in Galilee. At the same time that Mary and her cousin are getting his disciples assembled, uh, those soldiers who have been posted to secure the tomb have to go meet with their superiors. They go meet with their superiors and tell their superiors what had had happened. And what had had happened was that there was an earthquake. And once the earthquake happened, the earthquake shook the ground and shook the tomb. And we all know who caused that earthquake to happen. And after the stone rolled away, he walked out with his two good legs. Well, uh, th their superiors bribed them uh, to do not tell anybody uh, that an earthquake rolled the stone away and that he that we had secured in the tomb is now not in that tomb. They gave them a bribe for alternative facts and fake news. It just didn't happen with Trump. People have been paying for alternative news and fake news and alternative facts, even in the Bible. They bribed them to tell no one what actually had happened. And there's some accounts that even say they bribed them to say that his disciples broke him out of that tomb. But we all know that it was God and God alone who got Jesus out of that tomb. Well, after Mary delivers the truth, they meet Jesus in a mountain in Galilee. All of them meet Jesus up on a mountain in Galilee. I, I wish I had enough time to, to teach and talk a lot about all the mountain experiences that Jesus has and the importance of going up high to speak with him who is already high. I ain't. It is at and on top of this mountain that we get what is called the Great Commission. The Great Commission found in all the synoptic gospels. The Great Commission also found in Acts. That commission that tells each one of us to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And as God laid hold to my spirit a couple of weeks ago, what would be our theme and what would be our missionary emphasis for the year 2018? Uh, he told me to just tell your people, go. Uh, but I realized I didn't tell you where to go and how to get there and why we are going. Essentially, in, in track terminology, I committed what is called a false start. And so let me back up and give you a little information and a little guidance to why we're going, where we're going, and how we are going to get there. Because in every track meet, you've got to know what you're running, whether you're running the 100, whether you're running the 200, whether you're running the 400, or whether you're running cross country. And you can all look at me and know that the only place I ran was to the kitchen. <laughs> but there are races where you have to jump hurdles. You are called a, a hurdler. And um, those races are much more difficult than just running a straight 100 because you're on a straight surface with an intended target and nothing blocking your way. But this Christian journey is full of hurdles. It is full of hurdles. It is cross country because we got to run on and see what the end will be. We, we just can't stop at the 100. We just can't stop at the 200. We just can't run our little leg of part of the 4x4 four four relay. We've got to run on and see what the end will be. When Jesus tells them to go, when he says go run, go, go, go into all the world, he does not give them any geographical parameters. He just says go, almost like he told Abraham, just, just start walking, and while you're walking, I'll tell you everything you need to know along the journey. If, if you just trust me enough to just start walking, I, I'll be with you the entire way. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Just start out and go. He 
says, you've got to go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded of you. In other words, he says, you and us and we have to saturate this world with the good news and then train other disciples. We all have a duty to do that. Watch what happens in Matthew 28. When Jesus goes on the night before he's betrayed, he only takes three people, Peter, James, and John. That night before he was betrayed, or the night rather that he was betrayed, he takes only Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. But after he died, after he's resurrected, he brings the entire 11 because there was only 11 left because one committed suicide because he did not do what he said. When he just needs to commune with God to get his facts, to get his understanding and get his mission, he only takes a few people because you can't take everybody with you when you talk with God. You cannot tell also everybody what God has told you. You can only tell people who are up in the supernatural with you that when God gives you a revelation, you can't always share with everybody because everybody ain't a true believer. Oh, help me, somebody. Everybody up in here, up in here, up in here. Don't believe the whole Bible. They believe what they want to believe, what they like to believe. But this, this, this mission ain't, ain't no cafeteria line. You just can't pick out what you want like you at Burger King. You got to believe this whole word. If the scriptures you like in the book, the ones you don't like also in the book. And so after he dies and resurrection and wants to give a, the commandments of how we're supposed to live after he dies, he takes everybody. Before he only took Peter, James, and John. But when he gives the great commission of how the church is supposed to operate after his death and resurrection until he comes again, he takes everybody and gives everybody a role. The teaching and the training of saints is not just the responsibility of Chris, Ron, and Erica. It is not just the responsibility of three people. He took three before, but when he gives them a commission, he brings everybody. So all of us are responsible for telling this world that the wages of sin are still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And you ain't got to be no holy roller, foaming at the mouth, wearing a sheet on top of your head, wearing a collar, got a license. You don't have to do all that to tell somebody, let's have a word of prayer. When the last time you've been to church? When the last time you read your Bible? Why don't you come to Bible study with Matter of fact, just get the app and start right there. All of us can be an agent of change because that's what the Lord has commanded us to do. He says, go. Well, the first thing in any, any track me, any track me, anything that I, I watch it on TV. The first thing I know that when you, whenever you start a track me, before they, when they get on that race, when they get on that track, brother, the first thing they're going to say is on your mark. Can I get a witness? First thing, it's hold it right there. They're going to say, on your mark. This tells the runners in the race, get in your lane. I think I'm on it, Holy Ghost. Get in your lane and stay in your lane. They, I think it's ten, eight or ten of them. Everybody got their own lane. Now, the beauty on the track is they got white lines. And the white lines help you stay in your lane. In life, we got the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will help you stay in your lane. So you don't need to be telling me what I need to be preaching next Sunday. That ain't your lane. You don't need to be telling Erica what your favorite song is. That ain't your lane. You don't need to tell them to cut down the guitar because that ain't your lane. If it's too loud, move. I don't go to another church. Just go to the back pew.
Watch what Jesus does. He takes them to a top of a mountain. Not at the club. Not at the community center. Not in his living room. He takes them up so he can have them to himself. And so they're not distracted by the world. And it's there that they are instructed to stay in their lane and get prepared to run this race. And then I know that after you stay in your lane, after you get in your lane, then, then that man who's about to blow that gun is going to say, get set. For the track runner or hurdler, as my brother here is doing, who's giving God the praise already in advance. That means you're going to put your foot and your feet in the starting blocks. They, they got little blocks, little metal, little contraptions that, that I don't know what they're there for, but they, they, they help, I guess, stabilize you. Maybe that's what they do. Hey, that's good. They help stabilize you, and when you get set, you've got to put your two feet in the block, get down in a sprinting position, put your hands behind the line, and wait for the man to blow the gun. They've got about 30 seconds, Mr. Manaya, to get their minds right. To get focus on what is about to happen. They just don't say, on your mark, go. Help me, somebody. They say, get set. They say, get ready for what's about to happen. And you've got a few moments to stabilize yourself, get your hands behind the line, focus on the task ahead. Watch the text. After he gets in the mountain, on the mountain, what the first thing they do is worship him. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. When you worship, you get your mind right. When you worship, you block out all the cares of the world. When you worship, you forget the fact that your mortgage is due, that your lights are about to be cut off. When you worship him, you forget the fact you got to be to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. When you worship him, you forget all the things that are outside and you focus on him that is on the inside of you. That's why you need to participate really, really, really in the praise and worship experience in the beginning of every church service. This way you get set to worship him, to adore him, and so you're open to the word that God is about to put in your spirit. But literally when you close your mouth, you close him out. When you fold your arms and stare at the wall, that's all you're going to get back. The worship experience is so important to Christian living. That is where you spend time with God. That is where you talk to God. That is where you commune with him. Something happened the other day. We had a bad loss, bad loss, bad loss, bad loss, bad loss yesterday. And one of my players stayed in the team room. I saw him with his hands in his face. And one of the other coaches said, chap, you need to go talk to him. I said, no. No, he's talking to God right now. I said, there's a time and a place. And he needs some time with just him and God right now. There'll be a time for me to talk to him later. But right now, will I see him prostrate, him by himself? I'm not going to interrupt the communication that's becoming between heaven and earth right now. And every now and then, you've got to do that. You've got to put your hands in your face. You've got to block out everybody and dare somebody to bother you at that moment when you're just talking to God. You've got to put your hands behind the line, get your set stabilized, your feet stabilized, and get ready for the task that is at hand. And then after you're set, after that judge, that gun, whatever his name is, title, when they are sufficiently satisfied, I said sufficiently satisfied. When, when, when the guy with the gun realizes that everybody is ready, they don't say I'm about to blow it right now. Ain't no one, two, three, get ready. You don't know when the gun is about to blow. That's why you got to already be ready 
when he comes. You don't know if it's coming in 30 seconds, 34, 35. You don't know if it's going to be a false start. You got to have your mind ready for whenever you hear that sound, to lift up your holy heads and be ye lifted up and see the king of war. You got to be ready to go. The word mission, where we get the term missionary from, it's the Latin word missio. That Latin word missio means to be sent. To be sent. To be sent. All of us, whether you got on a white dress, a little red, little corsage on, is a missionary. Each one of us who have given our lives to Christ by the commandments of Jesus Christ are required to be a missionary. Each one of us is required to go. To go spread the good word of Jesus Christ. The good word that he was born. The good word that he lived. The good word that he still heals. The good word that he still gives sight to the blind. The still good news that he gives hearing to the deaf. The still good news that he makes a way out of no way. The still good news that he is the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. That, and that no man comes back unto the Father but by him. I know we're living in a world of alternative facts. We're living in a world of fake news. But the good news is that he lives. I say he lives. Does anybody know that he still lives? And that he lives within my heart. And that he's coming back. To receive me unto himself. This year, 2018, each one of us is being commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ to go into the world. To talk to somebody you ain't ever talked to before. You're not a counselor, but to give wise counsel to someone. To begin them on their Christian journey. To let somebody know that he's coming back sooner than we all think. And we've got to prepare people for the kingdom that is coming. And let me tell you why, as I told our leaders yesterday, uh, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And this is the word of God. This is not my word. Everybody ain't going. He don't want everybody there. He does, but it ain't going to happen. Because everybody has not prepared their hearts to be there. That's, that's what the judgment is all about. That he will bring into heaven those who have a pure heart like his. All your actions might not be pure. Everything you do might not be perfect. But you've got to have a right heart. And he's going to be looking for that right heart. And those of us who have that pure heart shall, somebody say shall, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And only those who have been prepared by his word through the instruction manual will be able to get there. So you got to understand that when you become saved, you get a ticket. When you give your life to Christ, you get a ticket. For those of us who fly often, Mr. Manai, every now and then you fly standby. Standby means you got a ticket, but you ain't got no seat. Standby means that when you get to the desk, you hope they ain't sold out. You hope that they got at least one seat left and they give you a seat assignment so that you can make it to your destination. Salvation gives you the ticket, but your heart going to give you your seat assignment. So you got to go to not the desk at America, not the desk at Delta, not, not to check in for your flight. You got to check in at one of them gates. And all of us got to check in time. All of us got to go and check in with the master to make sure that our hearts are worthy to come into the kingdom. And you can assist Jesus because he told you to. It is a commandment. That is why it's called the great commandment. It is not optional. We are commanded as Christians to share our faith. 
And if it's good enough for you, it ought to be good enough for your brother. It ought to be good enough for your sister. It ought to be good enough for that co-worker that's getting on your nerves. It also needs to be good enough for your neighbor who's putting his trash on your side. That's all I'm telling you to do. Go share your faith. Go tell people the good news of Jesus Christ. Because a saved neighbor is a good neighbor. Let us stand on our feet. Give God praise and glory today. Get on your mark. Get set. And then go. One of the things of being set is studying the word. Coming to Bible study, participating in the worship experience in the life history of the church. You can't teach anything you don't know. Amen. You can't help if you don't believe as well. So we, and we invite you to, to take advantage of all the resources that, that this church offers to you so that you might grow in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Because there might be one today you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, but you never made confession of your faith. You've never given your life to Christ. Uh, you, you, you might be in your lane, but you never got set. You never gone anywhere. You know what I mean by that? You, you're here in the church. You're in your lane. You're in the right place. But you ain't never moved. You've never gotten your mind right to serve the Lord. You've never made confession of your faith and began to run this race. If there's anyone who wants to give their life, this is the most important time. That you, unless you're coming down the aisle, we pray that you won't move. Unless you're coming down the aisle so that we know. We think if you move and you come to get baptized, we might throw water on you right now. But there might be one today. It's a serious moment of introspection. There might be someone looking for a church home. And you can begin this year a home and a place and a house where you will learn the unadulterated word of God. A place where you will be loved. A place where you will grow. A place where you will learn. About time that you, your religion catch up with your address. So why don't you come and disciple with us here at the Brooklyn Church. I give myself away
Sister Gatewood has she remembers her husband today his passing the anniversary of his passing that is approaching us continue to pray for Sister Marvinia Adams whose husband was eulogized last week retired Staff Sergeant Ronnie Wayne Adams I pray for Sister Shirley Reed who is home recuperating and then pray for Miss Carol Morant whose sister Sandra Cohen passed the other day and her arrangements are incomplete at this time and others in our midst that we know are burdened by bereavement are just going through the trials and vicissitudes of life shall we pray God our Father we come on glorious and beautiful day that you've given us. When we arose this morning, we saw the sun, God. Your sun, God. That sun that shines brighter than the one that's in the sky. And God, we thank you for this wonderful day that we have been given to come into this house to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We thank you, God, for the songs that have been sung, the prayers that have been offered, the word that has gone forth the commandment that you've given us in your gospel, that each one of us, just not the preacher, just not the worship leader, each one of us is required and demanded by you to go teach this nation, baptizing them in your name and for your sake, God, and telling them that the only way to get back to home is to follow the commandments that you've given us in your word, God. And it's up to each one of us to be responsible vessels to show you a good example of Christian living and stewardship. And then to continue to spread this word by inviting people to church, inviting them to Bible study, inviting them to use all the resources that are available to them through the Christian religion. You've heard the prayers of your people that someone who stands in dire need this day, God. So heal them, God, and heal them, God, and deliver them and grant thy partitions based upon your word and your will. And now to him who can keep you from falling. And now to him who can present you all for his presence with exceeding joy. Now to the only wise God our Father be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now henceforth and forevermore. And let all of God's children just say amen, amen, amen. Would you hug somebody on your way out? Would you hug somebody on your way out? Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night for Bible study. To you. Thank you.